Okay, so we I do a lot of numerical calculations, breaking things into small steps, and someone brought up, hey, you're, you're using the wrong thing. Your method's too easy, so I'm going to show you two methods for finding the update the numerical calculations uh, in mechanics. There's the Euler Cromer and the Run Runga Cut of Four fourth order. I don't know what the names are. Let's just get into it. Okay, so the basic idea is that we have some function and we're trying to find out. We don't know what the function is doing, but we know something about the slope of that function or maybe it's something about the second derivative of that function. So if I know the slope of that function, what am I going to find out about the function in the future? That's the whole idea of a numerical calculation. So let's look at the Euler method. We, I often call this the Euler method, but it's actually the Euler, Cromer, Runga, Cut, a second order, I think. Uh, method for finding the new function. Okay, so it goes something like this. I'm not going to use uh, some second derivative of function. F double dot depends on uh, t. And so this dot notation, uh, it just means the second derivative with respect to time. Sorry if that's confusing, but it just makes things a little bit uh, nicer. Okay, so I know uh, I have this function and I know I can calculate F double dot because I it's some, let's say it's a it's a force. So it's a force with the that varies with time or position or something like that. So if that's the case, I can set this up over a short time interval delta t. Then I could say that the second derivative f double dot is actually the the change in the first derivative over the change in time. So it's f the delta f dot over delta t, and I can write delta f dot as f two dot the second the first derivative at the end of the time interval minus the derivative at the beginning of the time interval so f2 dot minus f1 dot and divide that by the delta t now what i want to do is to solve this for f2 dot so if i just multiply both sides by delta t and add f1 dot i get that expression right there okay now what's next next i could take f dot and define that as the change in f over the change in t and then do the same thing so I have f2 equals f1 at the beginning of the time interval. And then here is a little trick. I'm going to use the derivative f2 dot to find the new f2, which is a little weird, but that it, it'll work. Okay, so that's that's my plan. So let's it goes like this, just to review. I can calculate f double dot. I just have an equation for it for some reason. And then I can use that to calculate f2 dot at the end of the time interval and then I use that f2 dot at the end of the time interval to calculate f2. That's how it works. It's it's simple. Um, and that's really why I like this one because it, it's not too complicated. Uh, it's not too difficult to even calculate these things and it's easy for students to pick this up. If you talk about this in terms of acceleration and velocity and position it, it pretty much is very comprehensible. Now let's go to the Euler-Richardson uh, this is also known as the, I think, and if I'm wrong, I'm okay with that, the Runga cut of fourth order. So again, we have the same function, and we can calculate the second derivative. Uh, but I'm, in this case, I just want to, I just want to talk about this in terms of going. Uh, I have the first. This is a plot of the first derivative. So this is the velocity plot. This is pretend like that. Okay, and so this is over some. I want to take some time interval delta t, and it's a huge time interval just so we can see what's going on. I can calculate, or I start with some known value, f1 dot. I know I know the the, the function at some position. If I use the Euler method, I would say that the new velocity f2 dot is the old velocity plus the the second derivative times delta t okay and that would if this if i take the slope of that line that would be the second derivative and i can use that to project where that would be but i could also go back and just go halfway and this is the key here to the euler richardson method is to do this half step thing so instead of going the whole way i want to just go halfway but i, I kind of need to still know that function and I need to know the derivative to find that, right? So if I know f1 double dot, and I multiply by not delta t, but delta t over two, and add that to f1, then I get this half step, which I'm calling f dot one plus a half, so it's halfway. Now once I know that, I can plug that value into my f double dot and get an, the slope at f one and a half. I know, see, isn't it confusing? I'm already confusing and I wrote this, okay. <laughs> um, 
So now I have I use that slope to find the position at time two. So I use the half the acceleration at the halfway point, the slope at the halfway point to find the position at the next angle. That's really the key. Now, if you want to do that with both the uh, the derivative and the second derivative, then it just adds a little bit more steps, but you do the same idea. Okay, I'm gonna do this for the tilting bead problem because someone said, hey, tilting bead problem, your, your numerical calculation is messed up because that method's not gonna be cool. So let's see how we would code this. So here is this tilting bead problem, and I'm gonna link this down below. I derived this with the Lagrangian, and then I implemented this in Python, and I had this function from the Lagrangian, s double dot, which is the position up the, the, the rod, uh, was equal to s times theta double theta dot theta dot is the angle the rate that the rod's tilting minus g sine theta. Okay, so I would need to actually have a function for theta. In this case, I had theta oscillating back and forth with some angular frequency. I know that make, that looks really weird, but this is the function I picked. Okay, and then I I'm going to need the derivative of that. So if I I literally took the derivative of theta with respect to t, and I get theta dot, because that appears in my Lagrangian expression for s double dot. Now, I'm also going to need to calculate theta half and theta dot one half. This is at the half step. So if I want to calc, if I have t, if I know t, I can add half of the time step and get theta in the middle, which I'm just calling theta half. I'm, and I drop the, the one notation, so I go from one to two, and I, I'm sorry, but I think we'll get it. So now the next thing is I can calculate s double dot, okay, just like before. With that, I can calculate the velocity s one half dot using a half time step. So I use that acceleration s double dot, which I just calculated. I use my initial s velocity uh, s dot, and I can calculate the velocity at the half step. I can also calculate the position at the half step, which I'm going to need, right? So I can say, using my initial velocity, s dot, with the half step, plus my initial position, I can find the half position. Now, I know it's getting crazy. Okay, so now I can calculate the half step acceleration using the half step position, s half, the half step uh, angular velocity, theta dot half, and the half step angle, theta half. So that's the, I, but I had to find, I had to find, s one half in order to do that okay which i didn't need s double dot to have to do that but i will because now i'm going to calculate the new velocity at the end of the time interval s2 it's going to be the velocity at the beginning s dot plus the half acceleration the, ha the acceleration at the halfway step and then i'm going to calculate the new position using the half step velocity so i'm going to take the position at the beginning of the time which is s plus s dot half times delta t, and then boom, there you got it. Yes, it's a lot of steps. Because see, the thing is you have to you have to kind of calculate those half step values and then go back and use them again. So you actually have to do everything kind of twice. Let's do this in Python. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my old program, I'm gonna add in this calculation and see what happens. So let's switch over to Python. Okay, so there's nothing new here. This is the same program. I just I saved it. I made a copy and saved it. Let's just run it, which I've already seen. I already did run it, uh, just to see what was going on. So there's my bead oscillating up and down. Um, the rod tilts back and forth. There's my plot of position as a, the position along the thing as a function of time. Everything's cool. Um, and I'm kind of surprised that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so now what I want to do is just do it again. I'm going to leave this part just like it is, and let's just take this stuff. Let's see, let's just copy all this and then see what we need. I'm gonna copy that, and this doesn't have to be the best coding practices, right? Um, okay, so theta, rod, I don't wanna make a new rod, I just wanna put the rod back where it goes, so rod.axis dot, and then the rest of the stuff I don't need. Did I reset theta? I wanna reset theta, reset the position, reset everything. The B again with the B dot P let's put B dot P less. And then the rest stuff I don't need. Okay. Um, I think that's good. Let's do one other thing. Let's do F2 dot plot. F2 equals G curve. I want to make two curves. Color equals color dot red. That, that way we can make a comparison. And then down here I'm just gonna put changes F1 to F2 and let's just see if it works. 
it might not. Okay. So it's running through the first one, and then to reset, and then it just does the same thing over. Okay. So the, the two curves are right on top of each other. So I'm happy. Okay. Now what we need to do is to change this code, I'm in my second loop down here, and change this up so that it, it looks like uh, the the run the cut of uh, fourth order method. So the first thing I'm going to do, I have theta, I have theta dot, um, I'm going to calculate, and I got s dot, and then s double dot, and s. So this stuff I don't need. I don't need this and this. We're going to do those differently. So there's s double dot. Okay. See, after that, I am going to calculate s dot in the middle, right? So I have s double dot already. I need to calculate s dot halfway. So I can call that s dot m, m for middle. And that's just going to be the initial s dot, the initial velocity, plus s double dot, which I just calculated, times dt over 2, halfway step. Okay. Next, I'm going to calculate the position in the middle. So s middle is going to be s plus s dot times, oops, you got to spell it right, dot times dt over 2. Now I'm going to calculate, I'm going to calculate the acceleration in the middle, s double dot in the middle, but I need theta dot in the middle and theta double dot, no, theta in the middle and theta dot in the middle. Yes, I know things are getting confusing. Theta dot m is pi over 4 plus 0 0.2 times sine of omega times t plus dt over 2. And then theta, or what do I call that? Theta dot m. Theta dot m, that's in the middle, it's going to be 0 0.2, same thing as theta dot, times um, omega, times cosine omega, not times t, but times t plus dt over 2. Okay, so now I have those. Now I can calculate the acceleration in the middle, sdd dot m in the middle is, now I'm just using this equation up here, uh, not that one, s double dot, this one right here. It's the same thing as this, but I'm going to, and let's just copy that, look, it's the same thing. But instead of s, I'm going to use s in the middle. Instead of theta dot, I'm going to use theta dot in the middle. Instead of g, I'm going to use g in the middle, which is g, psych, okay. And then instead of theta, I'm using theta in the middle. So now I have the acceleration in the middle. Now I can calculate uh, did I calculate s dot in the middle? Yeah, I did. Now I can calculate s dot at the end of the time interval. It's the s dot at the beginning of the time interval plus s double dot in the middle dot middle plus uh, times dt. And now I can calculate s at the end. It's going to be s at the beginning plus s dot in the middle times dt. I think that's it. Let's just run it and see what happens. I didn't save it. Okay, that's the first run. There's the second one. Same, it looks the same, right? Okay, let's just try. Uh, what if I what if I make this time interval for the second run not as as small? So make it five times bigger. Will it still give me a good result? But but this says this says that my other method was fine. It's still pretty good, and that's five times as big of a time step, and that's what that's really where you're getting the, the power here, right? I don't have to use much computer processing and get a better result, but I am because I don't care, and my computer's super fast anyway. Let's just make it crazy big. So now it's ten times as big of a time step, and let's see if it still works. So that's the first run. Here comes the second. It's still pretty good. Well, I want to see how bad it gets, if it still works. I'm going to do, hey, we'll do something else after this. Okay, there. Now, that, but look, that's 50 times this time step, and it's still not bad. Okay, let's put this back down to 0, 0, 1, so I know that one works. And now let's change the time step for the Euler method, the, the simple method, and see what happens. Okay, so now I'm going to go up here to the first time step, and I'm going to make this uh, 0 .00, 0 0.01, 10 times as big. 
That's still pretty good. Okay, let's make that um, that's fine. Let's make it five. Okay, yeah, you can see things are getting bad. Okay, so what have we learned here? We have learned that it is a pain in the rear end to code the RK4 stuff. It, it really is confusing. I get confused. Okay. But what we really learned is that this other method is not bad, not even a little bit bad. It is pretty good, okay? It, we don't get very much disagreement between the two methods, so it's better just to use a simpler method. And if things aren't working the best, use a smaller time step. But this is good for us to learn, right? It tells us the limitations of our thing. Now, someone also said, hey, check conservation of energy. Energy is not conserved here. In this thing, the, the the rod is tilting at some angles, some fixed angles, so it can add energy to the system. So it doesn't really doesn't really help us as a check. But in other cases, it could. So there you go. That's your introduction to more complicated numerical methods that I hope I don't have to do all the time. I'll talk to you guys later.